guys welcome to my youtube channel this is Poede Awojo here and this video my guys is the much anticipated much requested body back series where i'll be giving you the down low telling you all about how i lost my post baby weights from my first baby to my second baby as you all know i had two children in two years as most of you know so this video is going to be about everything that i did to get my body back so i have like a chart where i recorded this so i sat um april 2019 i was weighing seven to seven kg the weight gain wasn't obvious at that time up until the end of that month in april this picture was taking april 27th and it was becoming more obvious i was after my first trimester my second trimester then i sat august 2019 that's when i had my baby I was weighing 90 kg it was crazy like i was going crazy so in this picture that you see here wearing the same dress i was wearing in april 2019 but i still have a tummy bulge this was days after i had my child i was about yeah 89 kg here but it wasn't obvious you know because i was wearing my belly binder after it's been nine months after and at this time as of this morning so this morning i am weighing 74.2 this is over 15 kg in the past nine months if i do say so myself i think i did really good first of all before i proceed i would like to let you guys know you might not get that exact body due to stretch marks due to excessive weight gain you know due to new curves you have but trust me you can get something close to that body or even that exact body if you put in the work so let's get going guys this is the first episode of the body back series and in this episode i'm going to tell you all about everything i did to get my post baby board on check all these things i'm going to tell you are things i did after i had both my first and second child first of all for me, after childbirth, healing is holistic. When I mean holistic, I mean like mental, physical, spiritual. My whole being has to heal because trust me, childbirth is not a small journey. So if you've seen my 20 things that could happen to you after childbirth video, you know what I'm talking about. Your physical being, your mental being, your spiritual being it's all interconnected so you have to change your mindset you have to set your mind on the right course and say okay i'm going to do this i'm going to lose this weight and i'm going to do it for me and to feel better about myself and be the best version of myself so this is what i'm going to do and you also have to believe that you can do it okay i know there's a lot of stuff going on out there lots of people with different hacks also if you're willing to go down this road the way i went down this road then you should listen to me the first thing i do is i prepare my mind i tell myself this is not going to happen in a day when i had my first baby this is how i was i weighed about 90 kg and i went for my first postpartum checkup after six months i was able to get my body back so you won't get your body back in one day guys that's the first lesson it might be another time frame for you it might be six months it might be nine months it might be one year but if you take these tiny tiny steps little drops of water they say make a mighty ocean if you take these tiny steps towards living a more intentional life and having a more intentional fit journey trust me you would get your body back let's go first thing i do after I have a baby. If nobody has told you, Poeta is telling you now, make sure, in fact, when you're packing your maternity bag, make sure you pack your postpartum belly binder. 
if you see all these Colombians, Brazil, see all those Latinas, they don't play. Well. If you go and give birth in America, you see them. Psh, psh, after they finish giving birth, they are binding their stomach, and you are there doing. Oh, I'm not ready. It all depends, though. If you had a C-section, if you had a C-section, you had no, you have no business binding your stomach that early. You should wait at least six weeks or check with your check with your um gynae to be sure that you are strong enough to start binding your stomach i know you must have heard this and you have doubts whether it works belly binding works it helps your posture it helps your back it helps boost your confidence when you wear that dress at the beginning you feel great it gives support as you're regaining your core strength so you should carry a belly binder and start wearing a belly binder as soon as you're strong enough to do so after childbirth but my little caveat with wearing a belly binder is that if you wear a belly binder and afterwards you start eating like a horse my sister you will get fat again you will add the weight it happened to me so i'm telling you you will add the weight back so if you buy a belly binder and you start wearing one make sure you are doing it with all these other things i'm going to tell you about in this video okay number two hmm. exercise 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 hmm. there's no shortcut so my sister you can't escape it there's no shortcut with exercise you have to exercise your body why should you exercise your body after you have a child to boost your confidence to help tone your muscles, to help heal your diastasis recti, to help heal your pelvis, to help flatten your stomach, to help lose all that weight, you need to exercise, my darling. There's no shortcut about it. So for me, I do two phases of exercise. The first phase is the low intensity phase, which I do almost immediately after birth. Or if you had a c-section you can wait till like your doctor signs you off or six weeks after birth this low intensity is like low intensity cardio yoga nothing stressful because your insides haven't healed totally yet so you, that's not the time to start running fifty thousand miles Mba, don't let any gym instructor deceive you you would break down no so at this point my main focus in phase one is healing healing of my pelvis, healing of diastasis recti, those are the transverse muscles, pelvis. So that's what that phase one is going to do. And it will help with your mind. And exercise is going to keep you out of postpartum depression. It's going to help you handle postpartum depression to an extent. So don't lose yourself, guys. Please, please do this for you. In the first phase, one of the most important things is to walk every day. Make sure you walk. Even if you're not strong enough, or listen to your body. If your body says go, you go. Listen to your body. It's very important. You walk for at least 20 minutes outside. You need that oxygen. You need that fresh air to heal on your insides, okay? This is what I do in the first phase. Then I take it up higher notches, 30 minutes, 40, then I'm going one hour to get to 10 kilometers or 10,000 steps a day. But at the beginning, that's the first phase, I walk at least 30 to 20 minutes a day. And the second phase of exercise is the one where I do like high intensity cardio, where I'm doing brisk walking for like one hour, distance, lifting weights, I still keep doing yoga, but like a more intense, let's like say, kind of yoga at that time. And I don't stop walking. Keep walking. That's the key to losing weight. If so, for me, I, for my second phase of exercise, I wait till after I'm done doing exclusive, where I know that my baby is taking alternative sources of food. Weight. It's different for different women. For some women, they add weight when they breastfeed. For some women, they lose weight when they breastfeed. But for me, I add weight like breastfeeding makes me add so much weight. So these exercises which I do, I'll do videos for you guys after this video. Because if I do an exercise video in this one, it's going to make it way too long. So I'm going to do the video of my low intensity workouts 
for you guys and then my high intensity which I do after six months for you guys number three is diets very important guys diets 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 diet diets you need to watch what you put in your mouth my sister you cannot be eating pizza and ice cream every day because you just had a baby I know your hormones are still raging speaking to you acting confused yes but you cannot be putting everything in your mouth so with your diet the key thing is to have a healthy diet and start reading all the things in the ingredients of what you are eating mm -hmm. very important a whole lot of people don't read a lot of people don't read they just say oh low fat they drink it oh pancake syrup they put it in their, in their pancakes and they eat no you shouldn't be eating canned foods so what should your diet be like like as a breastfeeding mom or a mom trying to lose weight eat loads and loads of fruits and vegetables drink lots and lots and lots and lots of water hey that water eh i can't emphasize it enough then green tea my sister this green tea the person that created green tea is god that will bless that person green tea is very important if you want to lose weight there was a time i was taking morning and night it has caffeine but it's not a substantial amount of caffeine at all so it's you can take green tea substitute all this your sodas out the door all the things i need to go out the door soda out the door packet juice out the door out the door sugar out the door for my oats i take my oats with bananas so I drink a lot of green tea, herbal teas, brew your teas yourself, ginger and lemon teas, all those kinds of teas are great for you. Great for your immune system, great for you trying to lose weight, great for your baby set because they are packed with vitamins and minerals. So switch all your sodas, all your um, artificial drinks, switch them for natural drinks only. Another thing you need to do is to avoid processed foods. If you are eating noodles every other day, I'm sorry, I'm not ready to lose weight. I ain't gonna work. You have to make sure that, that if you cannot stop consuming processed foods, you have to consume them at minimal level. Like for me, I love noodles, to be honest. But I had to reduce my noodles intake to like once in three weeks or once in a month. You won't die, trust me. You need to throw all that out the door. Make your own juices, make your own fruits, because a lot of these things have hidden sugars in them that you don't even know about so those packaged cereal all these cereals that you think that oh they are low a lot of them have hidden sugars in it so even if you are taking yogurt make sure it's greek yogurt and you can sweeten by yourself probably on sweetened greek, greek yogurt not the type that was sweetened with sugar you can sweeten by yourself with honey but bear in mind that if you consume too much honey it's also going to end up as sugar in your system Pancake syrup has to go. You know why? It contains this ingredient. So anywhere you see this ingredient, listen to it very carefully. High fructose corn syrup. Run away. Look, read my lips. Run away. It's bad for you, my sister. It's really bad for you. And there are a whole lot of fruit foods that contain this high fructose corn syrup. Sodas, juices, foods that contain HFC, candy, sweetened yogurts. Some salad dressings contain high fructose corn syrup as well. Especially those ones that are low calorie or fat free. Read your ingredients. Knowledge is power. Frozen junk food. So as, when you're shopping in the frozen aisles, make sure that you read the ingredients because most of them contain high fructose corn syrup. Bread. Some bread have high fructose corn syrup. Canned fruits. Why should you buy canned fruits? Make your fruits at home. Slice them, eat them. Granola bars. Some of them contain HFC. A lot of commercially baked pastries contain high fructose corn syrup so you need to be careful about what you put in your mouth snacks you need to read your ingredients instead of snacking on things that you don't know the origin you can snack on things like nuts 
make your own parfaits you know those, that's the way to lead a healthy life not just to lose weight but on the long run to lead a healthy life nutrition bars all these energy drinks coffee cream most of them contain hfc so hfc is an ingredient that when you see when you see you should run away of course ice cream <laughs> lots of brands choose to sweeten their ice cream with hfc so be very careful it's not bad to splurge a bit but these rules these rules i'm giving you should be your normal so you taking pizza should be like oh okay i don't take pizza on a normal day so i'm taking pizza once in a month it shouldn't be every day your meal your breakfast would be noodles your lunch would be pizza your dinner would be um mince pie and some ice cream from you know a supermarket or somewhere that you don't know the origin splurge a bit once in a while you know life is too short not to enjoy the good things but what really are the good things if the good things are killing you hmm? they're not good things if they're killing you okay those are not the good things of life the good things of life are meant to preserve you are meant to make you live longer okay so the first thing you should do about your diet is cut down unnecessary sugars alcohol is an unnecessary sugar you shouldn't be drinking so much okay for me i don't drink so i don't have a problem with it but if you drink a lot of alcohol you should cut it down if you're willing to lose weight chocolate once in a while but if you choose to indulge in chocolate most of the time make sure it's dark chocolate high in protein good for you if you're eating rice let your plate of rice not be four cups of rice one tiny meat no vegetable you should have like let's say one cup of cooked rice two sources of protein like probably two turkey with your vegetables on the side and your half cup or let's say one cup of freshly made juice doesn't that work perfect food should be balanced your diet should be balanced so in your plates if the proportion of carbs is about 80 percent in your food you're not doing well oi then number five if you're going to eat fatty foods eat healthy fats healthy fats like avocados uh-huh avocados are my best friend my husband says he has never seen anyone who loves avocados the way i love avocados proudly says so they're good for your skin and they're tasty with bread you know wheat bread is my best bread i buy my wheat bread and i eat it my avocados almost every morning and when you're eating bread, you're not eating like five slices of bread though. One, two, it's okay. Okay. Um, so avocados, salmon, mackerel, not too much of mackerel though. Um, sardines, use olive oil to cook and make sure you don't heat it too much because when you heat olive oil too much, it loses its nutrients so make sure you don't heat it too much so yes eat healthy fats and healthy fats only for instance an example of a breakfast that's my breakfast it's eggs wrapped in cheese cheese is good cheese is not bad and some mozzarella cheese and spinach and then i have vegetables on the side and then i'm drinking a glass of watermelon juice watermelon and ginger juice and then i have just one slice of one or two slices of wheat bread cut on the side so that's a very healthy breakfast with some avocados of course that's a very healthy breakfast and that's good for you if you're willing to lose weight on the long run you have to take extreme measures that are good for you good for your heart and good for your well-being so you need to make sure you eat your proteins and when you're going grocery shopping that's where it all starts you need to make sure your cart is not full of unprocessed foods mostly healthy foods so that's all i do about my diet before six months but after six months where i know that okay i probably stop breastfeeding my child doesn't depend totally on me for food then i cannot decide oh i want to do a detox which i did i want to do a detox or go hard on with my diet but at that point where 
your baby depends on you for food you cannot do fat diets okay please 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 don't stop that baby your baby needs all the nutrients it can get okay just need to make healthier options of food so that's all i did to lose weight in the preceding videos i'll be showing you my low intensity workouts which is the phase one that i did to close my diastasis recti to strengthen my pelvic muscles and i will be showing you also the second phase of exercises which i did as well in preceding videos i'll also show you my detox program for those that are ready to do a detox so thank you for watching guys bye